This is the OnePlus 12. It's a smartphone that promises to be a flagship quality smartphone without you having to reach deep into your pockets to actually get that experience. But is that what you're actually getting? Let's find out. What's up, Internet? I'm Brian McDuff, AKA BMAC, and welcome to another video. So yes, today we are going over the OnePlus 12, a smartphone with a lot to offer without you having to break the bank. But as is usually the case, no smartphone is perfect, and the OnePlus 12, for all of its commendable greatness that we're about to go over, it does have some flaws. So let's get into them. Let's start things out as we often do by going over the OnePlus 12 design and how things are looking on the outside of this fancy looking smartphone. The first thing you're probably gonna notice right off the bat is of course this rounded camera module on the back. OnePlus actually said that they took inspiration from watch dials to design the Hasselblad camera module on the 12. And I could totally see this here. When you look up close, this camera system does look like a watch face. Even if I do wish that it was centered instead of off center. But for the rest of the device, you are gonna notice that you have rounded polished aluminum sides that are gonna blend into the rounded glass front and the rounded matte glass back of the smartphone itself. Complete with your flat top and flat bottom. And at face value, things look and feel pretty great here with one major exception. That exception being the curved front glass. For those of you who know me, you know that I've pretty much come to despise a curved front glass display in any smartphone design these days. You see, the curved front glass refracts the light emitting from the display in a very odd way where it almost creates this discoloration rainbow-like effect at the edges of the display itself. I really dislike the way it kind of warps what the display is showing itself at the edges. And perhaps more importantly, it could actually lead to accidental palm presses on the edge of the display, especially when you're holding the device with one hand. And in that case, you're actually diving into an area where you're actually lessening the user experience as a whole. But putting that aside, I must admit, I do like the way the overall phone looks and feels in my hand especially this glass back here, which has a texturized finish, which honestly fooled me at first. I couldn't tell if this was plastic or glass. It's not plastic, it's Gorilla Glass 5, but it has a finish and a feel that really does mimic plastic. The front glass, on the other hand, you could tell obviously that it's glass, and that is made out of Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which is awesome to see in a device at its price point. But you are only getting an IP65 dust and water resistance rating on the OnePlus 12, which is a little bit of a letdown here, considering you get IP68 dust and water resistance ratings in other flagships. But what this essentially means is that you can splash water onto this device, it's gonna be fine. You just don't have protection where it's rated to withstand if you happen to drop it into a kitchen sink or in the pool. It doesn't have submersion protection, but it does have splash protection. It is a little top heavy here because of all the material in the actual camera system here on the back. And it is a little slippery because of the texturized glass back here. So just make sure you have a good grip on it when you're taking it in and out of your pocket. But in terms of colors, the OnePlus 12 is available in two different colors here in the US in a flowy emerald color, which almost looks like a teal marble finish. And then you also obviously have what I opted for, which is the silky black color, because of course you got that matte black design flair. There's also a white color, which was released to the Chinese market, which is kind of a bummer, because I do feel like that would have been nice to have here in the US. But hopefully down the line, we get all the colors that everywhere else in the world got as well. But now more on the OnePlus 12 display and if the display itself could live up to flagship quality expectations. The OnePlus 12 packs a beautiful 6.8 inch OLED display with a variable refresh rate ranging from one hertz to 120 hertz. And it's boasting a pixel density rating of 510 for a high definition viewing experience and HDR support, including Dolby Vision. And the display could also get bright. And I'm talking bright. It's actually capable of getting up to an industry leading 4,500 nits of HDR brightness or 1600 nits of typical brightness. It gets plenty bright, even a little brighter than some of the other competing flagship smartphones with their brightness ratings that we've had released in the last several months. It is one of the top performing displays you could get in a smartphone right now. I do also have to give a shout out here to OnePlus for the very thin bezels you're getting on the sides of the display here, despite the fact that that front glass is curved, okay? So besides that point, I gotta say, the bezel's very thin. The display itself on this device looks great. Topping all this off is a hole punch selfie camera built into the front display that also allows for face unlocking of the device 
In addition to also getting an optical based under display fingerprint scanner that allows you to unlock the device that way as well, unlocking the device has been simple, quick, responsive, zero issues there. But behind every flagship device comes solid performance. So what's the processing power like? on the OnePlus 12. The OnePlus 12 has a Snapdragon 8 Generation 3 processor, which is one of the latest and greatest chipsets available for smartphones, and also happens to be a chipset you're likely to see and hear a lot about in other flagship smartphones throughout 2024. You're also getting 12 gigs of memory in the 256 gig storage configuration, or 16 gigs of memory in the 512 gig storage configuration. There is also an additional configuration option specifically available for the Chinese market, which happens to be one terabyte of storage with either 16 or 24 gigs of RAM. But hopefully OnePlus down the line allows these additional options here in the US, especially as the OnePlus brand name becomes much more familiar. But I've personally been testing the 256 gig storage option with 12 gigs of memory, and I gotta say, zero performance issues. I tried high performance mode on, I've tried it off, I've tested this thing through everything I usually typically do in a smartphone, and I gotta say, the OnePlus 12 packs a punch and holds up remarkably well, especially at its price point. I found the editing of my photos and videos on the go to be fluid, snappy, responsive, quickly exporting. I'm not much of a mobile gamer, but you are gonna have high frame rate support for your mobile games with fluid gameplay. So overall performance in the OnePlus 12 is definitely in line with what you would expect out of a flagship device. But we do have to take some time here to talk about what is probably front and center here, the camera system and what the photos and videos look like that you're gonna be taking on the OnePlus 12. In the OnePlus 12, you are getting a 50 megapixel wide main lens, a 48 megapixel ultra wide lens, and a 64 megapixel telephoto lens alongside your rather impressive 32 megapixel selfie lens. The wide and the telephoto lenses do have optical image stabilization and all three rear lenses offer Hasselblad color calibration. In terms of video, you can actually capture up to 8K video at 24 frames per second and you do also, in the camera system, have HDR video support, including Dolby Vision. First things first, I just wanna say here, the Hasselblad color calibration that you're getting in this camera system definitely makes a difference in color accuracy. Colors look natural, realistic, not overly saturated, not too vibrant, just all in all what you would expect out of a more quote unquote professional quality photo without the overprocessing we probably become too used to in smartphones these days for better or for worse. I think this is what OnePlus and Hasselblad have intended for the OnePlus 12. They wanna give you a realistic representation of the image you're capturing without overprocessing things. But if you're looking for just a little bit more touch of magic on the image processing side of things, you're gonna be a little let down. But I know, with all these flagship features we're talking about, how long could you actually expect the OnePlus 12 to last for? What's the battery life looking like on this smartphone? The OnePlus 12 houses a massive 5,400 milliampere hour battery capacity, which in and of itself is impressive and a top performing number. But of course, what ultimately really matters is how that number translates into actual screen on time. So with that in mind, with the default settings on the OnePlus 12, you could pretty solidly expect nine plus hours of screen on time, which hopefully impresses you because that is a top performing battery performance number. Now, at least part of this has to be because of the Snapdragon 8 Generation 3 processor we were talking about earlier, which is gonna allow the overall phone to run more efficiently, giving it better battery life numbers. And when the time comes to recharge your OnePlus 12, you're getting somewhat of a rarity here with a power adapter included, but not just any power adapter a 100 watt power adapter. But even with being capped off to 80 watts here in the US, you should still be able to recharge your OnePlus 12 from 0% to 100% in 30 minutes, which is just plain old wild. Not to mention you also get wireless charging support at 50 watts. 50 watts of wireless charging capability in the OnePlus 12, allowing you to go from 0% battery to 50% battery through wireless charging in just 30 minutes or zero to 100 in just about an hour. You also get a high output of 10 watts of reverse wireless charging on top of that. Everything in the power and battery and charging department here in the OnePlus 12 is just mind blowing. OnePlus came to play. And as brands and phones like the OnePlus 12 that are really gonna change the future for what's possible in a smartphone at a much more affordable price point. But with all this having been said, here are my final thoughts on the OnePlus 12. 
and you actually call this a flagship quality smartphone. No matter which way you look at it, the OnePlus 12 is just simply not a smartphone you could just ignore. It's not just a great device, it's an industry leader in several departments, and that's why it's making an absolute splash in terms of the amount of value you can get in a flagship quality smartphone without having to shell out thousands of dollars to get it. It's fast, it's powerful, it's smooth, the display is amazing. It's got a great Hasselblad-backed camera system that results in very realistic and professional quality photos. It has incredible battery life with super fast charging capabilities. All of this topped off with a solid design, cool colors, a comfortable feel. Realistically, the only two main things I would change about this device would be a flat front display and some beefier image processing. That's pretty much it. OnePlus, you give me those two things, I think everyone's gonna start to know your name. And with the OnePlus 12, I think you're already well on your way. As always, if you guys want the latest deals, prices, promos, and information for the OnePlus 12, you can of course always head to my affiliate link, bmac.link slash OnePlus 12, or as always, there's gonna be clickable links in the video description box and in the comment section below as well, so check those out. And with that having been said, I actually have a low battery here. I've been using this thing all day, but that's not a problem, because in 30 minutes, <laughs> I'm gonna be at 100%. That's still, that's still mind blowing. I will see you guys in my next video.